Hi, it's Jay from Merkland, and today I'm talking to you about the Mercedes 651 engine. Of course, I could make many videos on different um, uh, issues with these engines and um, the fixes. However, I'm just going to talk to you today a little bit about low boost issues that we see quite a lot. Um, a friend telephoned me today and he was asking my advice and uh, it made me think that, you know, this is pro a problem that comes up quite regularly and um, that may benefit others um, if I give you some of my little tips. So. If you have a low boost um, code on the on the vehicle, you need to check some basic things. So are there any boost leaks on the car? So first thing to check are your intercooler pipes. Uh, there's one on this side and one down there, the red one on this side. Um, both of those are very, very common for splitting. Um, they, uh, they are readily available. Um, although not that cheap, unfortunately. The red one is quite expensive, um, a couple of hundred pounds here in the UK. Um, the other side is a little bit cheaper, but they are both common for splitting. Um, either of those will give you boost issues, air mass type fault codes, uh, and so forth. So those are the first things to check. You will normally hear a hissing sound, uh, a, a sound when you rev, if, if that's your issue. Um, but uh, my friend today was having a problem with his turbos not actuating at all. So his turbos weren't kicking in. So on this engine, the turbos are actuated with a vacuum. Okay, the vacuum um, is supplied from this tank here. Okay, so this tank fills up with vacuum here and the vacuum pipes go off to various different actuators. There is one that controls the water pump, there's one that controls the uh, one of the turbo wastegates and the other one goes around here at the back of the engine to control the other turbo actuator. Okay, and also the EGR valve, which is at the back here, is also controlled by vacuum. A leak in any one of these, um, an issue with any one of these vacuum modulators will cause um, the, the car not to boost because there'll be a loss of vacuum. Um, we have seen all sorts of vacuum issues um, and um, the first thing I say is check if you have vacuum, okay? So this is your uh, vacuum supply, okay? It comes straight off the uh, brake booster pipe here, okay? And your vacuum goes into this tank, fills up with vacuum, and vacuum is created to the, these various um, units here. And the way to do this, I haven't got an assistant here with me today, but the way to do this is you will know um, straight away if you're getting vacuum, if when you start the car, this arm shoots that way, okay? So if you start the car within a couple of seconds, that arm should shoot in, okay? That is telling you that there is vacuum in the system. And then the next things you need to check is whether you're getting vacuum to whichever component you feel may be causing the issue. So um, as I said earlier, there is a um, vacuum actuators here. So there is one here, this, is, this one leads to that side of the turbo there, okay? And there is another one of these units underneath all of these gubbins here, underneath it's easily easier access from underneath the car and that's, that uh, controls the other side of the turbo. We have seen splits in the pipes um, in these, uh, especially the one that goes around the back of the engine onto the back of the turbo underneath this airbox. We've seen splits in those pipes um, causing a loss of vacuum. And we've also seen it where, in fact, there is plenty of vacuum getting to the turbo, but those adjustable rods down there need to be adjusted. Um, and um, and uh, that, that's an issue that we see quite often. But that will not give you a complete loss of power, a loss of boost. It will just give you um, intermittent boost or a delayed reaction, maybe. So the first thing to check is the vacuum. That's my number one uh, top tip is check that you're getting vacuum. Um, turn the car on. You'll see this rod shoot back. That's telling you there's vacuum. If you don't see that rod shoot back, see where the issue is. Quite often, this actuator itself is the issue and the vacuum um, is being lost here. So um, there's a vacuum pipe that enters here. And if this is faulty um, and the EGR is not actuating, that will cause you um, problems with boost uh, and you'll get fault codes relating to either boost, EGR, mass airflow. All of these systems are interrelated. So if you get a, a code to do with any of these systems, you should be looking at um, any, any intake air leaks, um, any um, vacuum leaks. Um, of course, there are other similar issues that this uh, car suffers with. Um, uh, one of the first things we always do when we have any of this kind of issue is to uh, do a smoke test where you put smoke into the intake of the engine and see if it comes out. Um, a very well documented thing you'll find on the internet is the intake manifolds leak. So um, under vibration, the little um, bolts that hold the manifold on snap um, and, uh, and and cause um, boost to be leak. Uh, sorry, um, uh, an air leak from where the uh, manifold joins onto the engine. 
This will give you low power again and air mass uh, type codes. So for that, uh, you have to strip down the area, ideally replace the manifold. If not, then at least put new bolts in uh, with new seals, etc. So that's another issue that we see a lot. Um, there are there are various issues, and I probably missed a couple there because uh, I'm just talking from the top of my head. Um, but um, the first thing to check, as I say always, is smoke test. Test that you've got vacuum. Um, test that your, um, your your pipes aren't split, um, and then you can at least move forward from there. It's actually very rare to have an issue with the turbos on this on these engines. These twin turbos are very very strong. Um, we we find that whenever someone has been and replaced a turbo, it's been the wrong diagnosis. Um, it's very rare that these turbos actually go wrong. I think in all of our years, we've probably had one or two genuine cases of turbo replacement, and that's very high mileage cars that may not have been you know, serviced very well. Um, if these cars are serviced, the, the turbo should not need any attention. Uh, they're very, very good units. So um, hope that helps someone. Um, I've rambled on a bit and gone a bit long-winded. There are, there are a, a couple of other issues I could mention, but... Um, as I say, anything to do with boost, intake manifold, check all the things that I've mentioned and then move on from there. Um, these engines, are, they, they, they're getting to a point now where they're so common that a lot of the issues are well documented on the internet. Um, but I still find that a lot of people end up replacing expensive parts when actually the issue is quite simple and just needs a little bit of a logical diagnosis rather than jumping in and throwing parts uh, at the engine. So um, hopefully that's helps and uh, thanks for watching.